Okay, um, a very good afternoon to our Vice Chancellor, PNCA, uh, as well as the e learning center. And thank you for your support and thanks for giving me this opportunity to share uh, my remote teaching and learning experience during the MCO. So, actually, my method is very um, simple. Okay, so I use Google Form. Okay, it's very straightforward. So, um, can you allow me to share, uh, to present, to, to share my screen? Okay. Okay, can you see my screen? Okay, so this is, um, I use Google Form. Okay, so I think many, many of you know what is Google Form, right? So this is uh, widely used in conducting survey as well as doing registration purposes and so on. And now also can be used to, uh, to have a self-declare for, uh, for the health conditions before you enter uh, a premise and so on. So actually besides uh, doing all these purposes, Google Form can be used for uh, remote teaching and learning. And, and this is very straightforward and simple. Okay. Of course, when we want to determine a teaching and learning approach, so we have to, first we have to look at our learning outcomes. Yes. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. So I use Google Form for, for my uh, remote and uh, for my remote teaching and learning. So this is a Google Form. Okay. So of course, in order to determine an approach, so we have to first look at our learning outcomes that we promised to the student before. So we have to check whether the approach can be used uh, to fulfill to fulfill what we have promised, which is our course learning outcome. So of course, in addition to the course learning outcome, so I actually I faced two major challenges. One of them is how to allow students to learn the same lecture material at different time different location as well as internet connectivity. So, uh, according to a survey conducted by... Hello. Hello. Hello, sorry. Dr. James, can you switch off your mic? James, please. Okay. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, according to a survey conducted by my faculty, so I find that uh, some of my students have the difficulties in the in terms of the internet connections. And then some students, they even quite heavily rely on um, smartphone as their learning device. So therefore, I have to overcome this problem. So um, that's why I end up with a synchronized method. So I'm not using synchronized, I'm using uh, a synchronized. Okay, so when we are choose a synchronized method, so I have another problem that I have to overcome, which is how to engage my students. Because of, as you know that uh, during our face-to-face, -face, the traditional approach, uh, we can always ask students questions during our lecture to, uh, to improve our engagement. But somehow, how to do it in a synchronized teaching and learning? Okay, so at the end, I choose Google Form. Okay, so these are the reasons I choose Google Form because of flexibility. So it can be achieved, it can be assessed uh, at different locations, whether you are uh, in the urban area, rural, uh, um, maybe uh, uh, at the mountain, other spoko uh, also can. You can assess uh, to Google Form. And then it's of use. So it can be assessed by uh, different devices. For example, if you are using smartphone, you can, you can assess. You can use your uh, tablet, your laptop, your PC. So everyone would get the same, uh, the same format of the Google phone, no matter what you use. And then difference, 
So using the asynchronized and with the Google form, so I can create different environment for students to learn additional soft skill. Because of using, by using the asynchronized uh, teaching, and, teaching and learning method, so students need to be, um, need to be learned, need to be uh, very uh, self-motivated, need to be self-directed, they need to be more independent in following my lecture. And, and, and then this is very, uh, I think it's very important a soft skill for them to learn during this period of time. And this can also apply in future. Okay. So I set sections for the Google form so that when the student want to proceed to the next section, so they have to first complete the first sections. Okay. So this is how I begin my lecture. So I uh, in order to, for me to keep track the student particip uh, participations, so I, uh, I will make it compulsory for them to provide email address and their name and metric number. Okay, and then, so after they provide their um, email, name and metric number, then they can start uh, watching my video. And then I actually, I break down, I break down my video lectures into short segments. Okay, so this is very important because according to, to research, the optimal range of a short video should be, uh, should be around 6 to 15 minutes. But I usually go for uh, not more than 10 minutes for my short videos. So, this short video is important for, for us to help the student to be more organized, to be more structured, and to be more disciplined. Okay, because of just now I know, uh, I say that uh, asynchronous, asynchronous method allows students to be more independent. But the thing is, we still need to help them uh, to learn all this kind of uh, soft skill. Okay, so we have to guide them. Yeah, so this is, uh, this is my, my video, short video, okay? So after my short video, then you have to answer a few questions. So here I show one example of the questions. So why they have to answer questions? Because of, we don't have uh, the traditional way of doing the student engagement. So this is one of the methods for the student to participate in the lecture, okay? So, and the advantage of using Google Form is you can set various types of questions. So you can ask them to give short answer, long answer, multiple choice, check boxes and so on, okay? And yeah, okay, so after those questions, after you answer the question, they will proceed to the next sections. So these are the examples. Okay, like for example, uh, there are actually there are three types of foreign exchange exposure, but I don't explain all, all the concept in one video. I break down into uh, uh, small sections. So transaction exposure, and then followed by questions for them to answer for them to if they don't. Uh, understand if they are or they are unable to answer the questions, so maybe they have to uh, rewatch the, the video all over again. Okay, so this is a, just a short video, so save your time to find the, the main point to answer the, the questions. Okay, so I consistently yeah, use short video and follow by a set of questions, short videos. And followed by questions. Okay, so they must answer all the questions before they can proceed to the next uh, sections. Okay. Yeah. So you can uh, from here you can see that actually uh, uh, students are quite uh, happy in this kind of uh, with this kind of method. And I actually I, I received a very good response from the mm -hmm. students, which is out of my expectations. 
but uh, because of the time limit, I only can show uh, some selected students' feedback about this kind of uh, learning methods. do some quizzes so from that we are more uh, clear and more understand uh, the topic that you want to explain to us and you want to teach them. I can pause or repeat the video if I am not understanding a certain point or vocabulary. So can I can find more information by Google just to increase my understanding. Says it wherever I am yeah, and flexible. it's more easier for me to use it. After watch the video only, we need to be allowed to do the question is very very nice method because from this we can understand the particular sub the topic that we are uh, that we are read. Easy for me to study because when I face the problem in any chapter, I can always repeat the repeat to watch the video, the given exercise, and the question which always related with the previous video even also can be as the revision after watching the video like after the video lecture there will be a few questions for me to uh, revision do some revision and then keep on refreshing by memory uh, we also are able to access it anywhere and anytime we want but within the duration that duration time we give it Okay, of course, I can't say that uh, this approach is uh, the perfect approach. There are some limitations. Uh, so this is one of the, uh, the suggestions given by the students. So they suggest the use of captions, which is, which is uh, very useful uh, for them in notes taking and understanding. Okay, and then um, because of this is asynchronous teaching and learning method. So we can't have immediate uh, discussions. So what I can do is, okay, so I create a session for the student and uh, invite the student to ask any question they, they face during the lecture. So they can, uh, and then um, I can answer them through email and so on. Okay, so after they complete my lecture and complete all the questions so they can click uh, submit. So once they submit, immediately they will receive an email. So from the email, they are able to, uh, to keep track on their understanding and also their performance in this lecture. Okay, so uh, that's all for my sharing and presentation. So it's very simple and straightforward method.